Hi, uh, we're the Food System team from Birmingham City Council in the UK uh, and we're here today to talk about the, uh, the various projects and practices that we're doing in our city to transform our food system. So I'm Sarah Pullen and I lead the Food System team and this is Bradley. Hi there, I'm Bradley Yacoub, I'm the Senior Officer in the Food System team. Hi, I'm Rosie Jenkins and I'm the Public Health Officer in the Food System team. Um, so we've got a few practices that we want to share with you today um, and it covers all sorts of different projects that we're doing across the food system and I think it's really representative of the, the, the range of projects that we're involved with and the work that we're doing and we're really happy to be able to share those with you. Um, so the first project we want to talk to you about is um, our food revolution um, and the food system strategy. So this is a really in innovative approach to food systems within a city because what we've done is we've really taken a truly city-wide approach. We've looked at the food system from everything from food production and sourcing but all the way through to what people are eating, food waste, but also recognising the role in economy, in skills, um, in schools and also behaviour change and innovation and research. And what we've done is we've looked at all the different people across the city involved in the food system and the different organisations and the roles they play. Um, and what we've been doing is really understanding what drives the food system. So not just mapping it out, but understanding why different things are happening and how we can improve it. So part of our approach has been uh, really focused on innovation. So what we have been really keen to do is think about the food system from different perspectives. Our team is really diverse, we come from different backgrounds. Um, so my background is behavioural science uh, and I'm also social entrepreneurship. Uh, Rosie's background is into research into austerity and how that impacts um, uh, people and their lives and their food choices and their health. Um, and uh, scientific background too. And Bradley's got a fantastic background with uh, understanding the marketing and um, uh, communication and working with young people and uh, other groups across the city. And I think coming from that background means that our understanding of what drives the food system is quite different to what it would be if we only thought about from a farming perspective or nutrition, for example. Um, so our approach has been to ensure that we challenge any assumptions that we've got about how the food system works and we go out there and we actually talk to the people across our city. So that's included um, speaking to people from uh, distribution centres with fruit and vegetables, from uh, food waste, schools, education, universities, and also um, the Food Justice Network, which is a huge collection of community organisations driving change across the city. Um, and we've also reached out to those communities who sometimes don't have their voices heard in uh, projects like this. So we've been proactively going out and, and commissioning projects to ensure that their voice is captured and has been influencing our approach throughout. Uh, so we're really proud of what we've achieved. We've now got um, a really proactive whole city partnership a group. Um, people come to the table with ideas of, uh, of projects and work and have been contributing to the food system strategy. Um, we've had over 500 people involved with the strategy and our plans for the future. Um, and what we're really focused on is empowering people and empowering people across the system to realise the potential of what they could do if they do things differently, work together more, um, see where there's barriers that we can overcome. And I think that's really key because not all solutions have to be funded with huge amounts of money, but it's instead realising who in the system needs to be connected to someone else. For example, those with uh, in the distribution centres who've got spare uh, food at the end of the day are now being more connected to those who work with community organisations and are redistributing surplus food. Also understanding that um, businesses need to um, be economically viable. So we need to make it so that people want to eat delicious, sustainable, healthy food. So we're really working with the businesses to make sure that that um, is something that's really put forward as, uh, as a priority because everybody needs to be benefiting in the food system for, for it to work. Um, we're now gonna move on to some of the projects that we've been involved with as part of this food system revolution. Um, that's been happening across our city um, and within all of our project, projects we've got uh, 
uh, local food legends who are people who are doing things differently in the city. And a really key approach that we have is capturing those examples of amazing work and amazing things that people are doing and sharing their stories with people across the city as well so that we can all learn and, and uh, celebrate what they're doing and also do things differently ourselves. So um, I'll move on to Bradley next, who's going to be talking about uh, our approach to food resilience. Um, thank you, Bradley. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to speak about the Birmingham Food Resilience and Security Exploration programme of work that we've submitted as our second uh, practice. And it's a key area of work that we've focused on in Birmingham, but it's also something of major interest across the nation, across the UK, and but also internationally, with the cost of living crisis, with supply chain problems and challenges, and with food insecurity becoming a major problem in the West. So one of the things that we did from our evaluation was explore what data and what evidence was uh, practical, practical and uh, was accessible to be used, the evidence and practices being introduced into the city. And we found that national, um, in 2021, 2.5 million people used food banks across the UK. And then more locally in the West Midlands, 207,000 people were also using food banks. But we don't have effective data locally at what best practices are, are available and what is driving the food insecurity in the city. So we developed two practices. One practice is around participation observation research, where we'll be working with students to work on site at food banks, um, uh, uh, community pantries, community kitchens, and observe and work with volunteers to find out what best practices are happening, how we can share the knowledge across different organisations and build this evidence base that we can use in Birmingham to justify expenditure, to justify more support and energy, but also we can share with the UK and further afield so we can really start to work united against food insecurity. And then the other element of it, and working with almost every university in the city on this project, is around food affordability and food availability, where we developed a tool that is an established tool nationally, but what we've done is it's gone a step further by introducing the planetary uh, diet. So it looks at ultra-processed foods and goes into more detail. And then these university students will conduct research on site to find out why people don't have access to healthy food, why people can't afford healthy food and what we need to know about the city and where we need to focus our attention and energy. So it's innovating in the sense that we are working with students, we're creating a new generation of people to battle and tackle food poverty and food insecurity in the city. It's um, impactful in the sense that hopefully it will drive what change we need to do in the city and what change needs to happen nationally. And then we can continue to develop this package and this suite of information, share it with, uh, widely, and then move to the next stage of the project where we'll start to instigate real change with the evidence base to justify why we need to make this change. So what I'm going to do is then pass on to, our, uh, to Rosie, who's going to talk about the third practice. So our third submission is um, looking at how we can be a more culturally diverse, healthy food city. So Birmingham is a really diverse city. Um, it's, it's the second most diverse city in the UK after London. And there's people from all over the world who've come and stayed in Birmingham. There are people who are from different heritages and ethnicities. And that's something that we really want to honour in these, this practice that we've been doing here in Birmingham. So um, two of the things that we've been doing are um, in that submission. So firstly, looking at um, creating cultural, um, culturally appropriate eating guides. So in the UK, we tend to focus on the Eat Well guide. That's the guide that's sort of suggested that we use, but actually that's made with European diets in mind. Um, and so it's, not, it's often not appropriate for people who um, eat other cultural diets. Um, so what we've commissioned is some work that will develop um, cultural healthy eating guides for um, different cultural diets. So things like an African diet, a Caribbean diet, East Asian diet. Um, in order to really steer and help people from those heritages and those backgrounds to be able to eat healthily here in Birmingham. And that's innovative because it, these guys don't exist and so this will be the first of its kind um, and that's something that's really exciting. And it's also innately inclusive um, in what we're trying to do because it's including all different types of people in Birmingham. 
And the second thing that um, we've included in this submission is um, the Cook the Commonwealth, which is a project um, that makes the most of the legacy of the Commonwealth Games being here in Birmingham in 2022. So what we've done is we've collected recipes for each of the 72 countries in the Commonwealth. Um, we've got over 760 recipes and they're all available um, on a free app or website called WISC. Um, again, showing that innovative approach, it's not a cookbook, it's something that people can access for free online. Um, and um, we're now running a campaign to help people to celebrate the diversity of Birmingham through cooking these recipes, um, which are from chefs in Birmingham, from Birmingham citizens, and also from further afield, from chefs in Malawi and from Malaysia um, and from all over. And again, that's, that shows inclusivity and a dedication to really honouring the cultural diversity of the city in the way that people eat their food and what they eat. And so this captures um, just some of the work we've been involved with in the city. And what's been really key to our approach has been um, the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact, as your framework has really helped inspire and guide our approach. Um, and we're really grateful that we're able to submit these uh, award submissions to you and we, we hope you consider them as well. But we also want to take this as an opportunity just to say thank you for pioneering this approach that brings together partnerships from, from across the world so we can all learn from each other as well.